So how how many days total have they missed? Okay, uh, let me just kind of back up and go okay. through how these things were calculated to begin with. Okay. We, um, and this was back as far as I know, back when I was a student, Hardeman County elected to go to uh, go extra time each day, approximately 30 minutes, in order to stockpile days for events that like we've we've had, we've experienced. So at the beginning of the year, uh, we will start with 13 stockpile days. Of those days in our calendar, I elect, and every director can do it differently, or school district, it's not just my decision, but we can elect to use those 13 days in various ways. A lot of school systems, the majority use to uh, a couple of those days for professional development. Some use a lot of those days for professional development. We choose to use two. So uh, that helps us get in that second parent-teacher conference in the spring, and then it helps us have another professional development day that we can bring our staff in and train. So out of the 13 total, we use two for professional development. That leaves us with 11 that we can use for inclement weather, for sickness, uh, emergency situations, those type things. We are down to one. <laughs> After uh, we've had um, eight inclement weather days thus far, and we've had two days for sickness and uh, back in January that uh, we just saw our numbers climbing, climbing, climbing with strep throat, well, I'm not a doctor, so I won't diagnose it, but just various elements. And before we did that, we consulted with our local health department to see what they were seeing. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of the media got it wrong and, and, and tried to make this a, a mysterious illness. There was no mystery. There was strep throat. There was stomach viruses. Uh, and that's what I told one of the outlets, one of the television outlets, that there's no mystery here. Uh, we have high numbers of kids coming to school sick uh, at school and it's spreading and, and we, yeah. we, are, we are a conduit for that and we talked with our local health department and they're seeing the same thing and in conjunction with them thought hey a break from school and a sanitation uh, a couple of days to sanitize every doorknob desk and everything yeah. would not only help us but help the community and uh, the timing of it was such that we could do it we agreed one day would be great. Uh, the doctor actually told me, he said, yes, one day will help, two days would be better. I said, so if we got two days at the end of a, a week, that would give us four with the weekend. Right. And uh, so we did that. Uh, but we were, we were approaching 15% absenteeism, which is huge. Our, our kids and our students and stakeholders are very, very good about, we have good attendance rates at our schools. And so when you see a, an average day is maybe 3%, 2 to 3%, that's normal. And as we watched it climb, and uh, once we actually passed the, the uh, 10, 11% mark, we knew we, we probably had an issue. So that took care of two days. And then you live here, so you know what's taking care of the other right. eight. <laughs> right. So how does the combination of them, I mean, obviously 10 days in, in an educational system is, is pretty, you know, mm, impactful. It's severe. How, how does it impact uh, a, a child's education. I know you can make some of those days up later if, if you wanted to, but um, how well, does it impact Right now, we're, we're, we're in, in the midst of all this last week, we had our seniors do an ACT test. And, uh, you know, say what you want about preparation, but there's always, you know, kids like to study the day before. And just the, the actual administration of the, the writing assessments going on right now, that's, that window from the state of Tennessee has been extended twice. Now we've got until like the 27th of March to get that in. But, uh, you know, just like a basketball team taking off the court, I, you know, they get rusty after a while. You know, this is a, a pretty pretty well-tuned machine with our teachers in the classroom as, to, as they're going through different gateways and benchmarks to, to get prepared for the, the testing day. And then, oh, you've got three inclement weather days thrown in there. It interrupts their cycle. So... Uh, what will the impact be? Well, we'll know when the test scores come back. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I would be in 100% agreement that it, it's, it impacts our students. And so we've had the ACT test that we did actually get in, uh, in in the midst of everything. We've had the writing assessment 
but then the overall preparation just for the TCAP tests that are coming up in April. You know, that uh, our teachers, no doubt, students will get back in the classroom and just hit it extra hard, but uh, will it have an impact? I'd have to say, yeah, it will. So how do the teachers adjust to this, adjust to being behind and throwing off their schedule? Just like everybody else. I mean, there's, I'm sure everybody's hair is on fire this morning <laughs> trying to predict, uh, you know, look at what time we have left, the days we have left. There will probably be some priority decisions made of, in the, I would assume, being a former teacher and principal that, hey, this is what we had left to cover, the objectives we had left to cover. Uh, we're going to either reduce the time that we had to cover each objective or we're going to put some of them by the wayside and uh, we're going to focus, you know, they'll, they'll be working priority lists themselves inside those classrooms. And they do great. I, I have confidence in them, but I also know the weather impacted us. So is it going to, um, are you looking at the possibility of expanding the school year and adding days? I'm not at this point. Uh, now, we still have a day left. Our county has a history of, of you know, r heavy rains and floods. And, and not every year do we have to miss school because of roads flooding, but uh, it's, it's, the pattern is there for April, but we still have that day left. We also have an opportunity uh, through the Commissioner of Education to submit a waiver request since Tennessee was under a state of emergency. I didn't see that one coming. In fact, some of the media uh, out of Jackson and Memphis called directors of schools and said, you know, is this state of emergency going to affect your school? And my response was, whether it was an educated response or not, was no, the governor calls a state of emergency, superintendents call off school. Uh, I don't see them necessarily overlapping. If that were the case, well then why wasn't every school out of school during the state of emergency? Okay. Having said that, we've received communications from the the Commissioner of Education last week that due to the inclement weather, they we could submit a request for, to forgive up to three days of the 180-day requirement. Now, there's some caveats to that. Uh, you've got to show why you were out of school. Well, that's not a problem for us. Uh, there's actually three requirements, and uh, two come to mind. Two of the three we will not have an issue with. I mean, you can go back and get weather forecast and we take pictures of our roads and uh, we, we've got a team that goes out and we work with the Sheriff's Department and we have a team here at Central Office uh, that goes out and inspects roads and, and makes those early morning decisions and typically that team submits pictures to me of roads and this is where we've got a problem. The difficult part is going to be the third requirement was you have to show your inability to make those days up. So that may, you know, the argument may not be there for that one. Uh, I'm, I'm Figuring on submitting a request to just uh, waive those three days and go from 180 days of instruction down to 177. Uh, will it be? Will it? Uh, will it be approved? I think so, probably. But that you know, at the end of the day, we probably do have the ability to make those up by adding that time on to the end of the school year. So. <clears throat> What can parents do to help the kids prepare for TCAP since they've missed these days? Well, uh, be engaged with that student at home. Uh, communicate with their teachers. Communicate, have conversations with the kid about what you're doing in school. It's the same thing that they do if we didn't have right. <laughs> inclement weather days. Uh, I think our teachers will, will, will be the main resource for that student, but uh, just encouraging them to prepare, do their homework, uh, teachers in, in schools will be sending out, uh, or typically do, regardless of whether, send out materials to prepare for the TCAP. And, and you know, as we get closer and closer, making sure that that child is focused and, and on that. But uh, it's a big thing, the TCAP is, but we don't want to over overstress our students about it. I'm, I'm very much of the opinion that uh, testing is necessary. It's a necessary evil. And... Uh, that is only one small component of what our students get at school every day. So uh, we're not going to we're not going to uh, stress out a lot about it. We're just not. So, in addition to the weather, you have three bomb threats that disrupted four. Four. That's right. Missed the last one. That disrupted the 
I guess the flow of the everyday. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. And so that puts them missing classes, certain classes, mm -hmm. more than others. It disrupted not only that school but others as we've evacuated, and, and you know, one of those we had to move students. Uh, one of those came in right at lunchtime at which point we had to leave meals there at the school and then call on other schools to, to help us, uh, our other schools here in the district, to help us feed those students at three different locations, which I think was one heck of a logistical challenge that was resoundingly met with success. But that's not something that we're, you know, thumping our chest about. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be doing those things. But we have a crisis management plan and and we've adjusted it every time that we've had a threat, and we'll continue to. But uh, we just would like for that to stop. And I know our law enforcement are working hard, and, and we're not the only ones. You know, uh, it's the misery loves company. So I'm a, I'll be briefing my board tomorrow night and, and have kept them informed that uh, just here in West Tennessee, you've had Ridgeway Middle School in Memphis during all of ours that was hit. Then you've had Haywood High School us uh, multiple times uh, and if you take a if you back off and look at the big picture in, in no way does it make you feel better but there there have been like a rash of these this school year ours only started after Christmas but uh, there is a school uh, that I won't name uh, that has had 17 evacuations and makes your four look kind of small. <laughs> well, misery loves company. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, what our concern is, uh, you know, the positives that come out of that is it, it allows us to execute and flex our plan and make adjustments to it because regardless if it's a hoax, it's a real, we're going to treat it as a real every time. And uh, we're going to focus on just a couple of things, and that is student, staff, safety, and accountability. And we're not going to always share those plans with, with uh, the general public uh, just because, just out of concern for safety. Right. But uh, we've learned a lot of lessons in, in the midst of all this. And we've shared, uh, Mr. Barnes has shared those lessons with his colleagues at the other schools. And uh, we continue to look at the plan and try to predict and be prepared for other scenarios that may come in. But... We spent a lot of time actually revising our, our crisis management plan last year, last spring and summer, and uh, I'm glad we did. And, so you can uh, put it to the test now, right? We put it to the test. <laughs> so how do you assure parents who get all upset and fearful about the bomb threats, and although there's there's nothing that's come of it, how do you assure them that when they, when they send their child to school that, that they're going to be okay regardless? Well, they have been, and I think you can look at our actions that we've taken here, uh, you know, with the evacuations and, uh, you know, the actions of the Sheriff's Department and our local emergency responders, not just the Sheriff's Department, but the Bible Police Department. And, you know, I have no doubt that if this were to occur at Middleton, that, that, that uh, you know, the, the, the Chief of Police down there would react the same way. And that's a good thing. You know, since Sandy Hook, uh, we've had two, two safety summits here in the county. It's not just law enforcement, but also our, our ambulance departments and fire departments and, and uh, EMA directors and stuff. And uh, could, it, could we do more? Yes. And will we? We certainly will. But it's just served us well to have all those people, uh, you know, on the same page. You've seen the response that we had at Central High School. Uh, it was locked down. And, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any personal words that I can give. But other than I feel very comfortable with the emergency services personnel that we have here in the county, that they know our plan, and, uh, and it's been executed four times or three times uh, very well. Yeah, because the other one was during when you were out of school, when wasn't it? When you were out, <laughs> out of school, it was. Well, well go ahead and blow it up. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you... What do you prepare to tell your board tomorrow? Is there anything, I mean, other than what we've discussed, um, that they're looking for specifically? Or in regards to weather? In regards, or the, the, well, the, both. The, the in safety of the bomb threats? Because, right? Yeah, because you still have... It's a law enforcement issue now. We, we have an uh, you know, action-reaction, 
and we are prepared to react anytime something like that.